We're here with actor Trey Ireland, and we're going to start and talk about his humble beginnings, his projects, and everything else. Hello, Trey. How you doing? I'm just fine to yourself. Doing fine. Let's start at the beginning. Well, like I said, in the beginning, you know, they, uh, God created heaven and earth mm -hmm. to let there be light, and then it was... Now, can we go past Genesis into Revelations, and now we're going to go on to you, and now we're going to go to okay, your well, Genesis. My parents was having sex, and then... Uh, Nine months later, here I am. <laughs> and after the nine months, okay, and then let's no, go to the school. Let's go to the schooling part. Yeah, no, so what do you want to know? Okay. Yeah, schooling, you know, upbringing, and everything else. Let um, let the um, viewers know, you know, something about yourself. Well, you know, from Chicago, so you know, uh, modest upbringing. Uh, I would say upper lower income. You know, coming from the inner cities of Chicago, and. Uh, just had a passion for acting without even knowing it because I've always watched television as a child and, and I would imitate, emulate things that I had seen and then I realized I was actually professional even though I'm watching it. That was even something that could be realistically tangible um, until school plays and, and that transcended to live plays and other plays and said, well, people are making money doing this and uh, I knew that California is the mecca of it all, so once I was able to save a little something to come out here, which was in 99, 1999, I you know, came on out and continued to pursue. Very good. What would you consider your, I don't, I hate the word, your first big break, but what would you consider the first role that you say, okay, I want to do this, I want to stay? Well, it hasn't been broken yet, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to stay just because of my love and passion and, 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 and obsession with acting and just to be in LA and be around and be in, in the realm of what this is. So the first thing that I was able to do that able to do that gave me confirmation was I met a young man by the name of William Allen Young in Chicago in uh, 99 um, and he's the father of Moesha, Brandy's TV show that was a very successful show and I approached him and told him I, I enjoyed the show and I was coming out to LA for, it was a competition I had to come out here for, like a modeling acting competition. And I would love if it was possible to come to your set of Moesha, if that was, if that was all right with you. And he said he loves, some of us with the passion within my eyes and the way I related to him and talked to him, he had given me his home number, his cell number, his address, and when you come out, son, look me up. And as soon as I got out in January, I called him. And without a blink, he said, okay, come down to Sunset and Galva. We are actually filming today. When I had gone there, they gave me full uh, access to everything, and I enjoyed that process. And I told them, if you don't mind, I'd like to continue to come out, stay out the way, out of sit in the stands or whatever, just to learn and, and, and be a part of everything. And, and because of that, weeks have gone by, and they were doing the casting. I had befriended the, the cast director with Shaman Bernard and, and Kimberly Foster, and they had me actually still had to audition for a role, and, and, and actually had gotten the audition, and that gave me a recurring role. Moesha. However, it was canceled. <laughs> so I don't know if I was a detriment to the show, <laughs> but it was canceled like a three. So I was able to do my role, uh, which got me my, my first uh, a SAG job and, and, and got me into the union and, and got my feet wet. And, uh, and that's what started it all. So I have to thank William Allen Young for that. Very good. Very good. We're going to you know, just go because we got five we minutes. Yeah, we're going to fast forward and everything else. Let's talk about some projects that you have coming up. Let's talk about, let's see, the first one that pops into my head. Let's talk about AIM. I'm doing yes, I'm doing a very, very sensitive project called AIM. The acronym stands for Angry Insecure Men. Um, and also, even deeper than that, it's, it's describing these guys' name. Like AIM, the A in AIM stands for Aiden. And the I in AIM is for Israel. The M is for Marcus. And it's, it's bringing awareness to domestic violence. The woman who wrote this play, her name is Angel Teron, who has actually gone through these abusive relationships. So, and it's very, very graphic, uh, very violent, the character I'm playing. So it, it's, it's, it's a very hard thing, journey for me to go with this, but because we're bringing awareness to what's going on and to hopefully stop or prevent it, uh, it's a very important piece to me. Um, and my character, Aiden, like I said, he was, he's very violent and he has abused her. And, and we're going to tell the real, raw, uncut version that's in this stage play. So if you do decide to come out, which will be August, I mean, October 3rd to the 5th, uh, just be prepared. So just to give you a, just a, um, an example of 
when he fought her, he hit her with closed fists. And I just slapped her to where her face was bloody. He had raped her um, for the reasons of him being angry and insecure and also because he had a problem with his own mother and, and people he had grown up with. So therefore, this man needs help. Uh, and it's just, it's like I said, it's a very gra graphic, a violent piece and, 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 and she has gone through three or four different relationships that we're all going to tell these stories and hope to bring awareness to women who are in these relationships to they don't have to stay in them. Why are they staying in them? So it's a message within it and it's the graphic way we have to unfortunately tell this message because it is a true story. So um, it means a lot to get this message out, especially in this in this in this day and age of people who are raising children. You're doing a lot of heavy pieces. I know you have another um, project that you're actually doing right now. Can you talk about that as well? Uh, I'm doing a, um, a historical, edu educational, spiritual uh, piece. It's called Duty Calls. And it's about Martin Luther King when he was called to duty to do his uh, for the Civil Rights Movement. The characters I play is one character named Bayard Russell. Bayard Russell. I apologize for Bayard for saying that. And he actually was Martin Luther King's mentor. Without this man, you would not have Martin Luther King Jr. as you know him because Martin Luther King was actually a violent person. He actually used to carry a gun, walking around like daring anybody to challenge him. And Bayard had taught him the teachings of Gandhi about nonviolence and the, the whole turning of the cheek and everything and, and to start that movement to teach him that is the way to, to cause the change, to get in, and then once you're in, you can you can make the other changes that you would like to do. It's not about violence all the time because you violence you just eye for now leaves the whole world blind. You can cut each other off, so you never have that progression that you can eventually merge together to to, to live uh, comfortably or to have a black president as we have today. Without those things, you wouldn't have had what we have now. Um, so that's fire. And then also I played a character by the name of Minister Malcolm X, who is on a completely opposite end of the rainbow. Not that he was advocating violence. What he was advocating was the fact of defending themselves. He was always respectful, always respected the police. He never did anything to commit a crime. However, he wasn't the person who won't beat me because his father was, was killed by the KKK. His uncle was hung by the KKK. So why would he want to integrate and, and cooperate with, with the white man when they're beating and, and, and destroying us and bombing innocent black girls, little innocent girls in, in the churches and everything else like that. So he had his views of self-defense and, and 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 to say that with this this racial situation continues to go as it is people are going to start to riot and be violent if it doesn't the change does not come so because of that piece i have learned a lot because of that because honestly as a child when we, when we taught this during black history month there's only time that really teaches this in regular high schools i'm not paying attention i want to go play i want to go to gym i wasn't really into that um, but I did what I did, had to do so I could pass the class. But because I'm very serious about embodying whatever character I decide to play, once I started to research Bayer and, and Malcolm, then a whole new life came on, new enlightenment. That it made me hungry to know more, not just because I want to research these guys to do them justice, which I had to do, because I respect them for what they have done, but also it was the educational process. And with that, because of the way I study and the way I download information and digest it, I have my headphones on at night when I go to sleep. Or I have the, the speaker on and let this keep on playing so it's in my psyche. So as I'm sleeping, I'm still getting information. Whereas now I'm going to a spiritual journey because it took me back to that actual time. Like, I don't know if you ever had a time where you know, you listen to, to radio or something, you go to sleep, you hear that in your dreams, yep. or you, you're watching TV, you hear, you feel like you're there every night. From the time I took on this role to that, I'm listening to Bayer speaking, I'm listening to Malcolm, I'm listening to Martin, and it literally, literally spiritually took me there to feel what they were going through because I had actual footage being played. So because of that, it mean more to me. It was a real journey that we were telling through a stage play. So that's why that means so much to me. That's duty cause. We'll be going on tour with that in January. We're going to Alabama for King's birthday. Um, to perform that. Then we're going to do the Black Cottage Circuit during Black History Month and hopefully do other cottage circuits um, to let them educate them all on, on this particular subject matter.
We're here with Trey Ireland. We'll be right back. Oh yeah, Trey. Yeah, there's one more um actually project before we go to everything else. There's the um play that you have coming up. It's called How to Love a Black Man. Let's just found on that. Yes, yes. How to Love a Black Man. I'm not trying to love a black man. I just want to play. Uh, my character in that, his name is Quantis James. Q U A N D I S James. You know, King James. And he's a very fun, charismatic character. Um, he's always speaking in third person. Um, and the world revolves around him. But the reason why is because he comes from also a very dark past and history. And the way we have developed me and, and the director, uh, uh, Renee, uh, who else was the writer of it? Um, he comes. He used to be 300 pounds growing up, um, and so because of that, he was always picked on. Even his own parents, uh, his own friends, or so-called friends, were like, "Get your fat self out of the kitchen. Get your fat self this way." So he's get beat up all the time. Never had a girlfriend, whatever. Uh, even at one point, he thought about committing suicide. Um, but then through the grace of God had given him the enlightenment to just go ahead and work out. And this is, this is, we work together and, 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 and slam down. So as he decided to start to do that, you know, he's on a treadmill, 300 pounds, people would talk about him, look at this fat dude on a the treadmill, probably going to break the treadmill. But as he's working and working and working and, and the time is going by, months are going by, a year go by, he's really starting to slim up. So now people are starting to, okay, you looking kind of good, Quantus. Now they're starting to feel him now. They start, you know, they're starting to accept him now. And he's like looking at how superficial the world is and how people really are. Like before you all were dogging me, talking mess about me, but now because I'm starting to look good, my body is being defined differently. Now you all love me, now you all want to invite me places, even to your own parents. Like before they was like, get your fat self out of here, get your wood, whatever. Now it was like, I made you your favorite meal. I made you this, what do you need? So it's like, for his realization, like the world is ugly. He's not, he's been the same person. He just changed his physical stature. So because of that, he looks at the world like it's all about him now because he, for once he has done the work that he and God had done to restructure his body to make it like that. And then to look at everybody else like, you guys are nothing. Like, you know what I mean? You guys are you're, you're shallow. And, and everybody who likes me now is because of what I appear to be, not because of my heart. My heart is still the same. So he's always talking third person. He doesn't really care about what other people think because what they think is superficial. You know? so, so he does it in a charismatic, fun way, but then you get to the depth of why he is who he is as the play goes on. But it's fun, it's a fun character. Very good, very good. Just because of time and everything else and you such a busy man, we're gonna actually wrap this up. And since you're so busy and everything else, let people know where they can find you at. See, I ain't gonna make you feel good about kicking you out the room. <laughs> yep. Like, you know, yep. Like girl, just you trying know, to, you know, like, wrap yeah, this up a little, you, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you see your way out? No, uh, I time. That. I do actually, I'm going to a rehearsal right now. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be a two rehearsal. One for How to Love a Black Man that we'll be doing October 18th uh, in Sacramento. And we'll be going on a tour for that. And also, the aim is what I'm going to actually right now. It's going to be this weekend. Uh, um, at the Acme Theater. So, um, where you can find me is Trey Ireland, T R A E I R E L E N D, on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. And uh, yeah, and then look out for the movies coming out and look for that play announcement because we will be coming through a theater and, and a stage near you. Very good. Thank you, Trey. All right, thank you. Bye.